let's take up the next important chapter that is major landforms of the earth as you're all aware we have mountains plateaus plains and many other structures present on the earth mainly because of internal processes called as endogenic external processes called as exogenic so in this book they try to give you the basics about this that is they the first or the internal process leads to the upliftment and sinking of the earth surface at several places and the second or the external processes right usually increases or decreases so in the second process what happens this will be completely eroded and this will be completely filled so rebuilding usually takes place the wearing away of the earth surface is called as erosion and it is being lowered by the process of erosion and rebuilt by the process of deposition different structures comes up mountains plateaus plains when we talk about mountains any natural elevation of the earth surface the mountains may have a small summit and a broad base the meaning of this is this it is considerably higher than the surrounding area see how the basic classes will be in some mountains there are permanently frozen rivers of ice or glacier example himalayas right and can you see this this is fold mountain and how is this happening because of convergence of two plates whatever sediments is there that is rising to form the fold can you see in this fold mountains layers after layers are usually present the sediments whenever they are compressed usually one layer after the other you observe these things mountains may be arranged in a line known as ranges himalaya has four parallel ranges trans himalayas greater himalayas lesser himalayas shivaliks alps also are present in this mountains are formed or there are three types of mountains one is known as fold mountains which is usually caused because of the folding from both sides or two plates whenever they converge you get fold mountains you have block mountains whenever i told you you have something called as faults wherever cracks happen one rock structure will go down correct whenever this happens can you see this has come up and this has come down can you see this looks like valley valley is known as graben and the one which looks like mountain is called as horst you have to remember the term horst and graben graben means valley very very important for us right and then we also have to know that there are volcanic mountains mount kilimanjaro which is there in africa mount fujiyama and many volcanic mountains i have already showed you with plate tectonics and then we need to talk about the plateaus can you see this particular region which is above a plateau is an elevated flat land it has a flat top similar to table land if you have normal land like this the plateau looks like this and this is mainly because if you have two mountains when they were compressed the land which is there in between was raised or i can call this to be graben as well sometimes tibetan plateau if you see they are actually in between himalayas and kunlun shan mountains tibet will be like this you have himalayas here kunlun shan mountains here so when these two were formed the plateau or the tibet which was there it raised above compression led to this particular part raising above the height of the plateaus often varies from few hundred meters to several thousands of meters the deccan plateau in india is one of the oldest plateaus east african plateau in kenya tanzania uganda and western plateau of australia are some examples and it is believed that plateaus means they have good mineral deposits remember where do you find good mineral deposits plateaus plateaus mountains and then if you have something then you usually see it is being present in plains a bit plains after sedimentation from mountains rivers usually come 
and they deposit. I have shown you outwash planes, all these things. And whenever they deposit, first you get bigger particles and then you have smaller particles and then it keeps on decreasing. So this sedimentation process usually leads to planes. And plain region is very good for agriculture. And here the population will be usually more. Right? This is what we need to see in this particular chapter. Let's move to the next chapter where we talk about India. When I am talking about our country, you know that it is bounded by Himalayas on the north, Arabian Sea in the west, Bay of Bengal in the east and Indian Ocean in the south. Right? Nothing much to see, so don't worry. And India is the second most populous country after China, you are aware. And if you look at the location of India, Tropic of Cancer passes exactly at the center. 8 degree 4 minutes north to 37 degree 6 minutes north latitude wise. Longitude is important, I have already told you it is almost 30 degree difference. So usually east, west and north, south extension is almost same. Right? And when we talk about India's neighbors, please see here, Afghanistan has border with India. Even though it is occupied by Pakistan, we say it is part of India. So usually we say Afghanistan, Pakistan, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar. So seven countries has land boundary, whereas Sri Lanka and Maldives are the two countries which have maritime boundary. Sri Lanka is separated from India by Park Strait and Gulf of Mannar. Very, very important. Today we have 29 states. You might be aware of this. No need to go in detail. Physical divisions, if we consider, Himalayas are actually divided into Trans Himalayas, Greater Himalayas, Lesser Himalayas and you also have Shivaliks. You will be reading about these things in detail here. They have just mentioned the names for the school children to understand. After this, below Himalayas, you have Great Plains. And then you have Great Indian Desert. Nothing much to see. Right? You have Western Ghats or Sahyadris and you have Eastern Ghats. Coastal Plains is also there. Right? You have Lakshadweep and Andaman and Nicobar which are usually coral reefs. Very, very important for us. I will be showing all this in detail when we take Indian physical geography books again. Just that we need to cover 6th standard NCRT so that you have a feeling that you have not left anything is what we are doing here. Right? Next important thing. See, in this book they are just introducing the names. So, I will also just tell you what are the different things that are present. So, that when we take up later classes, it will be at least you know the names. You have cold weather season or winter. You have hot weather season or summer. You have southwest monsoon season. I have told you, once it crosses the equator, winds which are blowing like this, they cross equator and turn like this and India is like this. India gets rainfall because of the southwest monsoon and with the southward movement of the sun. Usually even this will come down. This reversal is called as monsoon. Correct? And temperature varies with its location. With height it varies. Distance from the sea it varies. Relief also plays a very important role. You have tropical rainforests, I have already shown you. Vegetation will be thick, can you see here? Sun's rays do not penetrate at all. Trees, mahogany, ebony, rosewood, you have to remember this. And in India, where is it present? Andaman and Nicobar Islands, where you have islands, right? So they get rainfall throughout the year. And you have northeastern states, heavy rainfall. Western Ghats also get good rainfall and there you find evergreen forest. Then you have tropical deciduous forest, usually teak, sal, peepal, neem, shisham, all these are part of it. India, monsoonal type of climate, moist deciduous forests are usually present more. You have thorny bushes, grasslands and deserts, bushes are usually present. 
then you have mountain vegetation i have already told you with increasing height you get certain climatic condition called as this chir pine deodar are present in this region then you have mangrove forest wherever you have the coastal region where the fresh water and salt water is usually present we call it mangrove and you might be aware of sundarbans near west bengal and bangladesh right and then we need to look at wildlife sanctuaries and whenever we say you should be aware that tiger is our national animal peacock is our national bird like you know i'm just wasting your time by showing you some aspects what is more important is this migratory birds some birds such as pelican siberian crane stork flamingo pintail duck and curlew migrate very very important right just try to remember the migratory birds fine guys see as i have already given basics this has become easy for us but from 7th standard i have ensured that i record those before basics because you might actually get a revision whenever i take every point in 7th standard as well right now done with basics please see 7th please see 8th and then you have to see immediately 12th then you have to see 9th and 11th the order is already given there so just see that order and read i hope this is fine right and for those guys who wants to join for optionals the details are available so just intimate it to us geography optionals is available online you can opt for that thank you guys thanks for watching